Hey, what's up? This is Paul Solt from Super Easy Apps. I'm back with a new tutorial regarding auto layout and scroll views. If you've ever tried this, it's really challenging if you don't know what you're doing. And I'm gonna break it down as a starting point for how to get started. So we'll learn how to create the scroll view. There's a few steps that if you miss them, it's going to make your life extremely frustrating. So I wanna show you, if you're interested in learning that, click the like button and comment down below if this video is helpful. All right, so let's jump right into it. I'm going to show you what we're doing. So this is the demo that we're gonna create. It's gonna have a scroll view that's embedded with some content. We'll start with the simple example, then I'll show you how to add new content and sort of change things around. As you can see, I'm using a free form size for this and a bunch of crazy auto layout constraints. This is what a typical iPhone will look like. And this is what it's going to look like here but it's, we're gonna make it so that it resizes to fit. So it's gonna look a little bit funky in your storyboard, but this will work. And you can do the same type of stuff in code if you add these constraints dynamically on the fly. All right, so let's jump right in and get started. I have another project that we're just gonna start and we're gonna drag stuff onto our view. So we've got our content view for the entire view controller here. And what I'm gonna look for is a scroll view. So I'm gonna search for scroll view and we'll drag one of those out. Next, what we'll do is we'll just resize this to fit the content. This is going to be an important step to get it to be playing nice. Then I will right click on the scroll view and I'll drag to this view, set up all of these holding the shift key and then clicking this button. Once we do that, we've got our scroll view. I'll give it a background color just so that we can sort of see what things are. And I'll select one of these colors. And then we need what's called a content view. Now, if you start adding stuff to your scroll view, you're gonna have a lot of pain later on. So what I'm gonna recommend is a content view, and we're just gonna add a UI view for that. So that's this square with the white square on the inside. We'll drag this out and resize it to fit. And then we'll rename this content view. and it doesn't like me. All right, so if you can't edit that, I don't know why it's probably the, the issues that I'm having in the, the left side, but I'm just gonna click on the label and we'll call this content view over on the right. That should rename it. It normally does rename. I'm wondering if it's this issue that's causing that to, to not like it. All right, so next up with the content view, we need to attach this to the trailing top and the, the bottom. So we set up all four sides and we'll add those constraints. Once you do that, you're gonna see some red. There's gonna be some additional issues. If you look over here, you're gonna see that it's missing constraints. It needs an X position and a Y position. Now, the thing that we need to do is we need to specify both the width and the height of these. So I'm just gonna jump back over here and we'll right click on our content view and drag to this and we'll set up the equal widths and heights and add those two constraints. Once we do that, we should see the warnings go away and then what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to modify this so that it is not always constant. And so you're gonna come over to the attributes inspector and change the priority level to 250. So that's gonna be a low priority, which is gonna make this an optional thing. And this is important when we want this to scale. So let's go ahead and at least get started adding some content to this. So I'm gonna do that with some labels just add one to the top and I'll call this our top. Center that and I'll copy this. And for now I'll put this right here in the center. And then we'll have one down here. All right, so these are gonna just be pinned in place. They're not going to have layout constraints right now. We should see them in the iPhone 8 simulator and right now we can't scroll. So let's make sure this one's set to bottom. There's no additional content, so the content view is not going to scroll. And so in order to get this to scroll, we're gonna to need to change the size of our view. And what we need to do is click on this, the view controller, and then we're looking for the screen and we wanna switch from simulated size to freeform. That's under the measurements. Here, if I can, update this to, let's do a thousand, we're gonna see that this is gonna be a bigger screen. So if I zoom out, you can't really see it. Uh, it's a little bit bigger. Let's change this background color so it's more visible. Yeah, 
And if you just click here, it should snap to fit. All right, so let's recenter these labels. And one of the important things that we're going to see here is that when we have this set up without the, the layout constraints to really say how big this container is, we're going to not be able to scroll. And so what we need to do is we need to define how tall our content view is. And there's a couple ways to do that. We can define it by just setting up the constraints in the vertical direction. So why don't I go ahead and do that? I can just right click and I don't want that. I want to go to this content view. I want the top space. And then I'm going to go to the center label, we'll do the vertical space. And again, to the bottom label, do the vertical space. And from here, we're going to go all the way down. Now, if you don't see the bottom because it's so low and I'm, I'm missing it, I need to go right here. If you can't do that and you can't get this bottom constraint, just right click and drag over to your content view and set up the bottom space. So we should get blue lines in the vertical direction. And then what I'll do is I'll center each of these horizontally to the container. So now if we go ahead and run, what we should see is a scrollable view that now will go up and down and we can see that it scrolls. All right, so that's the, the starting point. The next thing that we are going to want to do is how do we update this to have new content? And so the way we do that is we're going to have to add new content to the screen. So if I sort of jump back to what our preview looks like, we want to add content that looks like this. And I'm going to drag out some labels and start designing. So put this somewhere in the center. We'll give this a heading, resize it to fit. If you are changing sizes of labels like this, I don't recommend it. Do commands equals to resize to fit content. Go to editor. That is right here, size to fit content. Really important that we have our labels sort of set up this way, unless you're positive that you want it to be a different size. And then we're going to need some of these text fields. So I'm going to drag these on. And the way I work is sort of top to bottom. And depending on the layouts, I am just going to sort of duplicate these holding the alt key. And these I want all to be sort of an equal width. So I'm going to add that constraint in a little bit. And then on the left side, let's go ahead and add some labels. So this one, let's call it data one, you can put your name or first name, last name, whatever you want in here. I'm just going to show you a quick example. And I'm going to center these based on the text field. So that's how I like to do this. For this one, let's just make this one a long one. So it takes up a little bit more space. And this one will be a short one, just so that we have something interesting. And then let's go ahead and add a text area. So this first step is just about laying out some of these components. Getting them where you want initially is really important. Don't go switching your size class at this point. We just want to get these laid out. And if we go ahead and run this, let's see what happens. All right, so by default, this is going to work and it's going to look great on the iPhone 8 because that's what I'm testing on. But when I switch devices, we're going to notice that this isn't correct. And so it pins in place the, that top corner. So what we need to now do is add the auto layout constraints. So if I want each of these to be equal widths, I could go ahead and I could add equal widths. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the, the height constraints now from the top down. Now we're going to have to, to put this in line with this constraint. So what you're going to look for is this I beam. I'm just going to delete that. Now we're going to make everything sort of relative to this new content. So this is how we can change our content. And we're going to do the vertical spacing. Now, if you ever mess any of these up, just do command Z to undo or command shift Z to redo. So I'm going to work my way down, choosing the vertical spacing. All right, so we should see all blue I-beams in the vertical direction. If we select things, we're going to notice that there's still red, and these don't have any constraints just yet. 
So the next thing to do is set up our other constraints. And so we're going to have these constraints. We're going to have some hor horizontal spacing constraints. So let's go ahead and add some of those. And then we're going to have our leading constraints. Now you're noticing that it's dynamically resizing those. I didn't want that. So I'm going to add trailing constraints. And then for these, I'm going to have to probably edit them. So depending on the order you add these things, it can do funky things to your layout. Actually, I'm just going to add the one. So let's start with this one. And if we just update this to zero, we're going to see it goes all the way to the edge, but I just want the the standard value. So if we do that, we should see that it is in set a bit. And I might want that to still move over a little bit. So it sort of is in line with the other content. It's really up to you. Generally, when we go to the edge, uh, we'll have a 20 space, but it's it's really up to you. So by default, on an interview, you have a eight point space between elements. All right, since they're all equal heights, that's going to sort of set up those constraints. And that's going to size these up. So if we go ahead and run, we can sort of see what this looks like. And you're going to notice that we don't see the data. So we've added constraints. They're all along the top. These are not being centered. And so I always center these vertically based on these views. So we're going to have to add these constraints. And then if we go ahead and run it again, we should start to see some stuff, but we're still seeing some red on this one. So this needs its its outer constraints, which is why we're not seeing it. So let's go ahead and add that. I'll use this menu down here and we'll just select add the two constraints and that will make that go like that. And then we can see if there's anything. So we are missing the, the constraint here. And I don't recommend using the fix it here. What I'm going to recommend is that you sort of think about it and then try and figure out how to add it yourself. So here we need to just center it horizontally. And that should make that warning, those two warnings go away. Let's run it and see how our, our app looks. And then if it, re it can scroll, then we'll test that. All right, so we're still missing something here. And the, the reason we're not seeing the text area is because it doesn't have an intrinsic content size. And so we'll just need to specify how tall we want it. So this will be based on your design. If we go ahead, right click, add that height constraint, then we can go ahead and run this. And there we see the content. So now we can scroll the content, we can scroll the text area, we can click on these fields and we can interact them. So that's how you can use auto layout in a scroll view. Now there's still some things that you need to fix up working with the the scroll view bounds and, and stuff like that. But now you have a, a starting point where this will work. Getting this to work on also the iPhone X is again gonna require a little bit more work and I'm not gonna cover that in this tutorial, but I want to give you a starting point so that you have something that's working because this part is probably the most frustrating part is how can I design this? And it, it really requires that we do a content view. So if this was helpful and you learned something, click the like button. If you wanna see more videos like this, comment down below, tell me what you're interested in learning about, and I can work on some new tutorials relating to auto layout or other topics on iPhone apps. All right, thanks so much for watching. And if you want, you can head on over to my website. It's supereasyapps.com. I've got a free Swift 4 course that you can get started with to build your very first iPhone app. All right, I will catch you guys later and have an awesome day.